Canada is the second largest nation in the world, as you may already be aware. But were you aware that the majority of it is uninhabited? This is because as you travel further north, the geography and environment become less suitable for people. The majority of people reside in sizable cities close to Canada's lone neighbor, the United States. The most livable regions of Canada extend from west to east, as shown in the map below. The most varied geographical elements can be found here, ranging from wet sand-covered deserts to lush verdant forests. More than half of the Northern Hemisphere's length, 4,600 kilometers from north to the south and 5,500 kilometers from east to west, is taken up by Canada. The nation's borders are defined by the Pacific Ocean on the west and the Atlantic Ocean on the east. Its motto, from sea to sea, is extremely apt given that it touches the Arctic Ocean up north. Pacific Time, Mountain Time, Central Time, Eastern Time, Atlantic Time, and Newfoundland Time are the six time zones that make up Canada's large territory. Main Regions – The West Coast The westernmost region of Canada that borders the Pacific Ocean is known as the West Coast. Geographers refer to it as the Cordillera Region, which includes the province of British Columbia. The coastal range mountains, which descend from Alaska and are situated extremely near the ocean's edge, determine Canada's border with the Pacific. The Canadian part of the Rocky Mountains, which move east away from the Pacific, define the border between British Columbia and Alberta. Massive evergreen forests and a wide variety of fauna may be found in both ranges, which have traditionally shaped the world's stereotype perception of Canadian nature. Rich, lush valleys, as well as the Okanagan, a tiny, warm, dry region in southern British Columbia, can be found between the two Pacific mountain ranges. Because it is protected by the mountains, this arid region offers a climate that is conducive to the growth of fruit and vegetables, making it the natural home of some of Canada's biggest orchards and wineries, the Canadian prairies. Canada's landscape abruptly flattens out beyond the rugged mountains. The provinces of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba are part of this enormous region known as the prairies, which also comprises some of the driest and least forested regions of the nation. The area serves as the foundation for Canadian agriculture due to its wide open fields and flat arable ground. Nonetheless, there are also very arid desert-like areas of southeastern Alberta that are famed for their rocky terrain and enormous gravity-defying stone formations called hoodoos. Although frequently disregarded, the northern prairie's topography is significantly hillier and wooded than the southern prairie's more well-known plains. Similar to how these three gigantic lakes Lake Manitoba, Lake Winnipegosis, and Lake Winnipeg dominate the province's center region, which is bordered by lush flora and rivers, bogs, and swamps. Central Canada The two largest provinces of Canada, Ontario and Quebec, are located in central Canada, which is a component of the vast geological formation known as the Canadian Shield, which gives much of the country its characteristic shape. The Laurentian region, also known as Central Canada, is a mostly green region of rolling hills, grassy fields, and deciduous forests with a barren and rocky north. It is bordered to the north by the enormous Hudson Bay, and to the south by four of the five Great Lakes, Lake Superior, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, and Lake Ontario. Thousands of small lakes and rivers may be found all over Ontario and Quebec, and many of them are encircled by damp wetlands that are home to well-known Canadian wildlife like beavers and moose. The Great Lakes, St. Lawrence Lowlands area, a length of low elevation and productive farmland situated along the shores of Lake Ontario and the enormous St. Lawrence River, both of which run out into the Atlantic Ocean, is home to the majority of the region's human inhabitants. Atlantic Canada The area to the east of Quebec, which includes the four Atlantic provinces of Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia, as well as the Appalachian region, is comprised of these outlying islands and peninsulas. The terrain of Atlantic Canada, often known as the Maritimes, is a mixture of rocky coasts and forested interiors. It has been sculpted by its proximity to the ocean with steep cliffs, high tides, and extensive coastal fjords. Although the Appalachian mountain range does reach into some areas of northern New Brunswick and Newfoundland, much of the interior is heavily forested and at low height. The small Atlantic provinces are notorious for being densely populated, in contrast to other regions of Canada, 
and only Newfoundland has significant areas of completely deserted terrain. The most desolate of them is Labrador, a geographical entity that despite being formerly a part of the province of Newfoundland, is located on the mountainous northeastern tip of Quebec and is home to the Torngat Mountains, Canada's tallest range east of the Rockies. Northern Canada Canada's north is a region with a hazy definition. With the exception of the Maritimes, all of the provinces have dry, generally arid and unpopulated northern regions that are vulnerable to long, chilly winters, significant snowfall, and permanently frozen soil. Nevertheless, in a more precise sense, the capital in the north typically refers to the vast northwest portion of Canada, which is home to the three northernmost territories of the country, Yukon, Nunavut, and the less imaginatively called Northwest Territories. Although Nunavut and the NWT both have stony, barren terrain, which is minimal flora, Yukon in the extreme west has a more forested, Cordillera-style environment. Canada's far north is an archipelago of enormous islands covered in the icy tundra, large frozen glaciers and towering mountains. Few people would venture there. This distinctive and exotic territory even though it is a place that few people will ever visit in person, contributes significantly to Canada's image. It is home to polar bears, seals, and narwhals, but there is little plant life and hardly any human population. Weather in Canada Canadians have a contentious relationship with the weather that stems from a combination of dissatisfaction and defensiveness. Canada is undoubtedly one of the coldest countries in the world. Throughout the winter, December to March, Several cities experience lows of minus 20 degrees Celsius, with accompanying heavy snowfalls, icy winds, and slick frozen roads. On the other hand, the majority of inhabited areas of Canada experience nice springs, March and June, mild autumns, September and December, and hot summers in addition to the country's four distinct seasons, June and September. Canadians find it irritating when outsiders make the generalization that Canada experiences extreme cold all year long. Residents of Canada who reside close to the Atlantic or Pacific coasts typically encounter little snow but lengthy periods of heavy rainfall during the fall and winter, as well as a generally humid, gloomy atmosphere. Rainfall is much less common on the dry prairies. Still, on occasion, strong thunderstorms and tornadoes, sometimes referred to as Alberta clippers, can be triggered by the dry air. The notoriously harsh and snowy winters of central Canada typically give way to rainy springtime and extremely hot, muggy summers. The most extreme weather polarization occurs in northern Canada, where summer days can last up to 24 hours straight. In contrast, fall days are nearly perpetually dark. But even in the north, there are still times when it's rather warm and green, at least where people dwell. Canada's Natural Resources There is little doubt about Canada's position as one of the wealthiest nations on the planet. There are very few valuable materials, chemicals, or elements that cannot be found in at least some areas of Canada. As a result, the country possesses an enormous wealth of valuable natural resources that it may sell to other countries. Most notably, the Prairie Province of Alberta is home to some of the greatest oil and natural gas deposits on the American continent. Because of this, Canada has been able to emerge as one of the major energy-producing superpowers of the 21st century. The province is also home to the greatest proven oil sands, or bitumen, reserves in the world. This fact, when combined with Canada's traditional petroleum reserves, solidifies Canada's position as the world's second most oil-rich nation, behind only Saudi Arabia. Mineral deposits can be found in every one of Canada's provinces and territories, with the exception of the extremely small province of Prince Edward Island. However, the types of minerals mined vary from one province to the next. In addition to uranium and potash, which are mostly mined in Saskatchewan, Canada is one of the leading producers of zinc, which can be discovered throughout the majority of the country. Potash and uranium are also found in Saskatchewan. The northern regions of Ontario and Manitoba contain significant deposits of nickel and copper. In contrast, the Atlantic region is traditionally known for its abundance of iron and coal resources. Gold has been found historically just about everywhere, while diamonds are becoming a major source of revenue in the northern regions of Canada. In a controversial move, Canada has also continued to be one of the world's most active producers 
of the hazardous insulator known as asbestos. The majority of the country's asbestos is mined in Quebec. It is then exported to developing nations with lax regulations regarding public health and safety. Provinces and Territories Canada is divided into 13 different sub-national units, sometimes known as provinces and territories. The remaining three are referred to as territories, whereas the first ten are known as provinces. It used to be the case that territories did not have self-governance and that they were directly controlled by the federal government in Ottawa. However, this is no longer the case. The only important political difference between a province and a territory is the term. The provinces and territories that make up Canada are some of the largest administrative divisions of any country in the world. Collectively, they are larger than the majority of independent nations. Given that much of northern Canada is so sparsely inhabited, they also have some of the lowest levels of population density of anywhere on Earth. This is because there are so few people living there. Almost 90% of Canadians make their homes within 160 kilometers of the United States border, which is primarily situated along the 49th longitudinal parallel of the planet. What do you think of the video? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel before leaving. Thanks for watching.